Hello and welcome back to the HIV RNA Test Guide Podcast. You know, we're your trusted source for all things HIV. And today we've got some news that is um, seriously groundbreaking. Yeah, we're talking about Lena Capivir, or LEN for short. It's this long-acting injectable for HIV prevention and showing some really incredible promise. Okay, so imagine an HIV prevention injection, but you only need it twice a year. Mm -hmm. That's the potential with LEN. And recent studies are giving us a look at just how revolutionary this could be. We're talking about the Purpose 1 and Purpose 2 trials. Right. And what's so interesting here is that LEN isn't like just a tweak on a current medication. It's a whole new class of HIV drugs called HIE-1 capsid inhibitors. Okay. So break that down for us. What's so different about this approach? Well, think of the HIV virus as like this tiny little machine and it's trying to invade your cells. The capsid is like its protective shell. And what LEN does is it basically jams the machinery inside, it disrupts the capsid, and that prevents the virus from replicating and spreading. So it's completely different from how other HIV drugs work, which usually target enzymes involved in the virus's life cycle. So it's like you're disabling the virus before it can even get started. Pretty impressive. Tell us more about these purpose trials. What kind of results are we seeing? Yeah, so the Purpose 2 trial focused on men who have sex with men, and the results were remarkable. LEN was 96% effective at preventing HIV acquisition. Wow. Yeah, to put that in perspective, that's significantly higher than the protection offered by condoms and rivals the effectiveness of daily oral pre. That's huge. I remember when daily pre-P was a game changer, and this seems like it could be even bigger. What about the other trial? Yeah, so Purpose One studied the effectiveness of LEN in cisgender women in Sub-Saharan Africa. And here's the really incredible part. We saw zero infections among the women who received the LEN injection. Is zero. That's absolutely incredible. Both these trials together really paint a powerful picture of LEN's effectiveness across such diverse populations. Absolutely. And what's also exciting is that LEN could really be a game changer for people who struggle with adhering to daily oral pre-P. Yeah. I can see that taking a pill every single day. I mean, that can be tough for some people, whether it's because of stigma they forget or just plain pill fatigue. Exactly. And then there's also the potential impact on stigma. I mean, for a lot of people, having to take a pill every day can be a constant reminder of their HIV status or their risk, which can unfortunately lead to discrimination or even violence. So a twice yearly injection could be a way to discreetly protect oneself without that daily burden and the potential stigma that's associated with pills. A little less frequent dosing, potentially less stigma and incredible effectiveness. It sounds almost too good to be true. Were there any safety concerns in these trials? Well, both LN and daily oral PFP, specifically TDFFTC, were well tolerated in both trials. There were no new or significant safety concerns that were identified with LEN. Of course, continued monitoring and research are important, but these initial results are really encouraging. That is definitely reassuring to hear. With results like these, I imagine there's a lot of excitement and movement to get LN approved and available. What's happening on that front? Well, the World Health Organization, or WHO, is taking a very proactive approach to evaluating LN and figuring out how to make it accessible globally. Yeah, so they're planning to convene like a guideline development group to thoroughly evaluate LN's efficacy and safety and also cost effectiveness. This group will include experts from a bunch of different fields, government representatives, and importantly, community members. Their assessment's gonna inform guidelines on how LEN should be used for HIV prevention globally. That's great. It sounds like a really comprehensive approach, not just considering the science, but the practicalities of you know implementation and the needs of the community. Yeah. What else is WHO doing to ensure access to LEN? Well, they're working to make sure that if LEN is approved, that it'll be affordable and accessible to those who need it, regardless of where they live. This involves collaborations with a bunch of international partners, pharmaceutical companies, generic manufacturers to try to address potential cost barriers. That's crucial. I mean, especially considering the history of, you know, really high drug prices for HIV medications. Mm -hmm. So it's encouraging that WHO is really prioritizing equitable access right from the start. Absolutely. And to facilitate access even further, WHO is advocating for the pharmaceutical company to apply for WHO pre-qualification. This means that LN would undergo a really rigorous evaluation of its quality, safety, and efficacy. And once a product receives this pre-qualification, it becomes much easier for countries to actually procure and distribute it. It streamlines the process of making it available to people all around the world. Okay, so we have this potentially revolutionary new drug that's showing incredible promise in clinical trials. And the WHO is actively working to make sure it can actually reach the people who need it most. This really feels like a turning point in HIV prevention. 
I agree, Lenin's development is a major scientific breakthrough. But it's important to remember that it's not a standalone solution, it's part of an expanding toolkit that we have for HIV prevention. So let's dive into that toolkit then. What other options are out there besides daily oral PAP, which we know has been incredibly effective? Right, well, daily oral PAP containing tenofovir disoproxyl fumarate, or TDF, has been a game changer. Since WHO first recommended it back in 2015, we've seen its impact in reducing HIV transmission rates, and it remains a cornerstone of HIV prevention efforts. Then in 2021, WHO added the Depavirin ring to its guidelines. This ring is a discreet and long-acting option that women can insert vaginally to protect themselves from HIV. And there's another long-acting injectable we've talked about before, Cabotegravir, or CEDLA, which received WHO approval in 2022. Exactly. Each of these options daily oral PAP with TDF, the Dapiburn ring, and CABLA. They have their own advantages and considerations. And now Len is poised to join this expanding arsenal of tools. I think what's so exciting about this expanding toolkit is that it allows individuals to choose the method that best suits their needs and their lifestyle. You know, it's about empowerment and flexibility and how people can approach their sexual health. Absolutely, you hit the nail on the head. Having this range of options is essential especially in areas with high HIV incidence. It allows healthcare providers and public health officials to really tailor prevention strategies to the specific needs of their communities. Yeah, it really highlights how far we've come in HIV prevention. Mm -hmm. I mean, from a time when there were very limited options to now where we have you know, this really diverse and growing toolkit, it's incredible. It really is. The more tools we have, the better equipped we are to tackle this, you know, epidemic on a global scale and meet the needs of such diverse populations. So just to kind of recap, you know, we have Aline, this incredibly promising new HIV prevention drug that only requires two injections a year. The trial results are just remarkable. And the WHO is taking these proactive steps to ensure it's safe, mm -hmm. effective and accessible globally. Yeah, and it's not just Lynn. We have daily oral PPP, the Dapavirin ring, and CIBLA. Each tool kind of adds another layer of protection, empowering you know individuals and communities to take control of their sexual health. So it's a real reason for optimism in the fight against HIV. But before we wrap up, I want to pose a question to you and to our listeners. With these effective prevention tools emerging, you know, could we envision a future where HIV transmission is virtually eliminated what would that world look like? That's a really powerful question. Imagine a world where, you know, the fear of HIV no longer holds people back, where stigma is replaced with, you know, understanding and support, where everyone has the knowledge and the resources to protect themselves and their partners. It's an inspiring vision mm -hmm. and one that I think we should all strive for. You know, the fight against HIV is far from over but we're clearly making significant progress. Absolutely. Staying informed about these advancements is really key. You know, mm -hmm. Talk to your healthcare provider, do your research, and advocate for access to these life-saving tools. Thank you so much for joining us on this deep dive into the groundbreaking potential of LEN and the expanding landscape of HIV prevention. We'll be sure to keep you updated as new information becomes available. And in the meantime, for more information and resources on HIV prevention testing and treatment, please visit our website at hivrnatestguide.com. Stay safe, stay informed, and keep the conversation going.